A household electric clothes dryer typically consumes close to 3,500 watts of power, amounting to about 10 megajoules or over 2.5 kilowatt hours per load. In most household applications, this heat is pumped out of the house and is lost to the environment. One solution to this waste of energy is to vent the dryer through a filter into the house. However, this has its drawbacks. At certain times of the year, this heat is undesirable in the home, so homeowners will probably resort to standard venting in spring, summer, and fall. Also, the moisture from the dried clothes ends up in the house and may reach unacceptable levels, resulting in moisture damage and potentially harmful molds. If instead, the dryer's exhaust is used to preheat water going to the house's hot water heater, it doesn't affect the house temperature and much of the moisture is condensed out and can be drained away. An old or inexpensive natural gas hot water heater can be used as an air-to-water heat exchanger. In my case, a high-efficiency hot water heater had been installed in the house, so the old tank was available for heat recovery. The hot moist dryer air flows down the flue of the heat recovery tank and leaves through a filter as much cooler and drier air vented into the house. The moisture condensing in the flue is collected and drained away, its heat of vaporization added to the heat in the tank. The household supply water, now preheated by the heat recovery unit, flows to the main hot water tank for further heating. The hot air from the dryer should flow from top to bottom for three reasons. First, air as it cools naturally flows downwards, aiding the venting process. Secondly, this direction of flow results in efficient countercurrent heat exchange with the warmer air encountering the warmer water at the top of the tank, while the cooled air still exchanges heat with the cooler water at the bottom of the tank. Third, the flue is easily accessed from the top for cleaning by removing the dryer vent pipe. After removing the natural gas burner, determine a suitable means of attaching a vent pipe to the bottom of the flue. Make sure this is a watertight connection to help keep the floor dry. You will probably want to elevate the heat recovery tank off the floor for easy access to the lower piping. Remember that a full tank of water is very heavy. This ABS pipe arrangement for the four feet on my tank has a coupling at the bottom of an alignment cut in the upper part of the pipe to support the weight without splitting. A watertight connection to a drain pipe needs to be made at the lowest point in the venting. Aluminum foil tape, not regular duct tape, can be used to stop leaks. The condensate should go to a floor drain and the cooled air should go through a filter before entering the house. In my case, I routed it to the return duct of my forced air furnace so that the furnace filter would double as a secondary lint trap. I make sure the filter is replaced every two months. The tank can be filled up to the safety valve for maximum heat transfer. To allow for maintenance, a set of valves should be installed. Water should either be directed through the heat recovery unit with an inline valve closed to prevent bypass, or the inline valve should be opened and two valves, one on the inlet and one on the outlet, should be closed to allow bypass flow directly to the hot water tank while the heat recovery unit is being drained and serviced. A fourth valve on either the inlet or the outlet, vented to the atmosphere, can be installed to speed up drainage of the unit. Alternatively, the safety vent on the tank can be temporarily removed to accomplish the same task. By using the waste heat from the dryer to preheat water for the household hot water tank, the energy is converted into a form that is needed year-round and doesn't affect the house air temperature. By condensing out the dryer vent moisture, the house humidity is controlled and the additional latent heat of vaporization is salvaged. For more information, please contact me at the address shown.